Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt, written by Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by James Ransom. Before I was even 12 years old, I got sent from North Farm to Home Plantation because they needed another field hand. When I got there, I cried so much they thought I was never going to eat or drink again. I didn't want to leave my mama. I'm going back to her, I whispered every day to young Jack, who worked beside me in the field. Well, you better start eating all you can, sweet Clara. He smiled at me, but then his smile was gone. In a low voice, he said, or else you won't make it happen. Young Jack helped me believe I'd get back to my mom someday. Truth was, I'd be lost before I got through the fields, them being so big and all, but I didn't give up dreaming. Aunt Rachel was raising me now. She wasn't my for real blood aunt, but she did her best to care for me. One night she come back from working in the big house and found me lying dead tired on our cabin floor. She shook her head and say, Sweet Clara, you ain't gonna last in the fields, but I got an idea. Aunt Rachel's idea was sewing, and she started teaching me the very next night. It wasn't easy for me to learn. My hands already rough and clumsy from hoeing and weed in the fields, so Aunt Rachel took it real slow. She brought scraps of cloth from the big house and taught me about each one, how it was special and had to be treated in its own way. I liked to piece the scraps together and make pretty patterns of colors. But Aunt Rachel didn't care much about pretty patterns. Now you rip out that whole rope and do it again, Clara, she said. Why I got to make the stitches so tiny, I complained. You gonna be a real seamstress, that's why. Tomorrow you come in with me to the big house. I got it all worked out, Aunt Rachel said one day. I was frightened. You ready to sew with me, she went on. Mrs. Daughter Ella be getting married come spring. I told Mrs. I'd be needing help. She look at your work with sharp eyes, Clara, so do it quick and neat like I taught you. Next morning, I tried to eat some cornbread, but my insides was all knotted up. i never been inside the big house before or seen white people that close, except the overseer. The morning sun was streaming into the sewing room, turning everything all sunflower yellow. Aunt Rachel gave me some sheets to hem. Instead of being contrary, that needle did all I wanted, just like it was part of my hand. At the end of the day, Mrs. come in. Let me see your work, Clara, she said. I gave her the sheet and she ran it through her hands real slow. I held my breath, watching. From now on, come here, she said at last. When she left, Aunt Rachel and I looked at each other, about ready to burst. We done it, girl, she cried. So I changed from a field hand to a seamstress. Since the sewing room was right off the kitchen, Aunt Rachel and I were near cook and the helpers. There was always lots of bustle and company in the kitchen. I was hearing about all kinds of new places and things. I listened so hard, it felt like my ears must be growing right out of my head and getting big with listening. One day, two white men come to see the master. The drivers went into the kitchen to talk to cook. There have been so many runaways last summer, one of the drivers said. They going around asking all the masters in the county to join patrollers. Crazy running away, muttered Cook, as she beat up some batter. Where you going to get to, sup lost in the swamp? Done now, said the other. But I hear we ain't that far from the Ohio River. Once you get that far, the Underground Railroad will carry you across. That's right, agreed the first. The railroad will get you all the way to Canada. Then you free forever. Cook snorted. If it be as easy as you two let on, more would have gone. One of the men replied in a quiet voice. It'd be easy if you could get a map. 
Walking back from the big house that evening, I asked Aunt Rachel about what I'd heard. Where's Canada? And what's the Underground Railroad? See there, Aunt Rachel pointed. That's the North Star. Under that star, far up north, is Canada. The Underground Railroad is people who've been helping folks get there, secret like. She looked at me hard. But don't you start thinking about it. You run away and get caught, you be beaten. Still, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Next day, I asked Cook, those two men that was here yesterday, they was talking about a map. What's a map? Just a picture of the land, that's all. Whatever's on the ground, a map can happen. Sunday, I went to my favorite place on the little hill and looked out at the people's cabins and the fields. I took a stick and started making a picture in the dirt of all I could see. But how could I make a picture of things far away that I couldn't see? And how could I make a map that wouldn't be washed away by the rain? A map that would show the way to freedom? Then one day, I was sewing a patch on a pretty blue blanket. The patch looked just the same shape as the cow pond near the cabins. The little stitches looked like a path going all around it. Here it was, a picture that wouldn't wash away, a map. So I started the quilt. When you sew in, no matter how careful you be, little scraps of cloth always be left after you cut out a dress or a pillowcase. So while my ears kept listening and my hands kept sewing, I began to squirrel away those bits of cloth. When we was off work, I went to visit people in the quarters. I started asking what fields was where. Then I started piecing the scraps of cloth with the scraps of things I was learning. Aunt Rachel would say, Sweet Clara, what kind of pattern you making in that quilt? Ain't no pattern I ever seen. I don't know, Aunt Rachel. I'm just patching it together as I go. She looked at me long, but she just nodded. There was a buzzing in the quarters one summer evening. I saw the patrollers and I knew someone had run away. It was young Jack, but five days later they had caught him. That next Sunday I went to see him, and we walked to the top of the little hill. He didn't smile the way he used to. I took a stick and began to draw in the dirt. I drew a little square for a big house, a line of boxes for the cabins of the quarters, and some bigger squares for the fields east of Big House. I drew as much as I'd pieced together. Jack sat beside me, not saying anything, not even looking at first. Then he started seeing what I was doing. I handed the stick to him. I hear him catch his breath up quick. Then he begun to draw. I worked on the quilt for a long time. Sometimes months would go by and I wouldn't get any pieces sewn in it. Sometimes I had to wait to get the right kind of cloth. I had blue calico and flowered blue silk for creeks and rivers, and greens and blue greens for the fields, and white sheeting for the roads. Mrs. liked to wear pink a lot, so Big House, the quarters, and finally the Big House at North Farm, they was all pink. The quilt got bigger and bigger, and if folks knew what I was doing, no one said. But they come by the sewing room to pass the time of day whenever they could. By the way, Clara, a driver might tell me, I heard the master saying yesterday he didn't want to travel to Mr. Morris's place because it was over 20 miles north of here. Or someone would sit eating Cook's food and say, So, as I could hear, where it is, they go and plant corn in the three west fields on the Viarna plantation this summer. When the master went out hunting, Cook's husband was the guide. He come back and say, that swamp next to home plantation is a nasty place. But listen up, Clara, and I'll tell you how to I thread my way in and out of there as smooth as your needle in that cloth. Then one night the quilt was done. I looked at it spread out in the dim light of the cabin. Aunt Rachel studied it for the longest time. 
She touched the stitches lightly, her fingers moving slowly over the last piece I'd added, a hidden boat that would carry us across the Ohio River. Finally, they came to rest on the bright star at the top. She tried to make her voice cheery. You always did like to make patterns and pictures, Clara. You get yourself married to young Jack one of these days, and you too will have a real nice quilt to sleep under. Aunt Rachel, I couldn't sleep under this quilt, I answered softly, putting my hand over hers. Wouldn't be restful somehow. Anyway, I think it should stay here. Maybe others can use it. Aunt Rachel sighed. But ain't you gonna need the quilt where you gone? I kissed her. Don't worry, Aunt Rachel. I got the memory of it in my head. It rained hard for three days the next week. Me and Jack left home plantation in a dark thunderstorm. The day after, it was too stormy to work in the fields, so Jack wasn't missed, and Aunt Rachel told them I was sick. We went north, following the trail of the Freedom Quilt. All the things people told me about, all the tiny stitches I took, now I could see real things. There was the old tree struck down by lightning, the winding road near the creek, the hunting path through the swamp. It was like being in a dream you already dreamed. Mostly we hid during the day and walked at night. When we got to North Farm, Jack slipped in through the darkness to find what cabin my mom had. Then we went in to get her and found a little sister I didn't even know I had. Mama was so surprised. Sweet Clara, you growed so big. Her eyes just like I remembered, her arms strong around me. Mama, I'm here for you. We going north. We know the way. I was afraid they wouldn't come, but then Mama say yes. Young Jack carried my sister Anna, and I held on to Mama's hand. We kept on as fast as we could, skirting farms and towns and making our way through the woods. At last, one clear dark night, we come to the Ohio River. The river was hot, but I remembered the place on the quilt where I'd marked the crossing. We searched the brush along the banks until at last we found the little boat. This was hid here by the folks in the Underground Railroad, I said. The boat carried us across the dark, deep water to the other side. Shivering and hungry and scared, we stood looking ahead. Which way now? Jack asked me. I pointed. The North Star was shining clear above us, up there through the woods, north to Canada. Sometimes I think back to the night we left. When young Jack come to wake me, I can still see Aunt Rachel sitting up in her bed. She just shook her head before I could say a word. Before you go, just cover me with your quilt, sweet Clara, she said. I'm too old to walk, but not too old to drink. And maybe I can help others follow the quilt to freedom. Aunt Rachel kept her word. The quilt is there still at home plantation. People go look at it, even folks from neighboring farms. I know because some of them come and tell me how they used it to get free. But not all are as lucky as we were, and most never can come. Sometimes I wish I could sew a quilt that was spread over the whole land, and the people just follow the stitches to freedom as easy as taking a Sunday walk. The narration and production of this video was produced by Johnny Bell Books.